Hey everyone, today I am walking you through most, if not all of the features included in what I believe to be a super spectacular note-taking app that is free. I've gotten a few requests to make this video because of the love and help that many people got from my GoodNotes 5 tutorial and walkthrough video, which I'll link to in the cards and in the description. I'll also link my comparison video for GoodNotes 5 and Notability, another note-taking app. Both GoodNotes and Notability come with a small one-time payment to download from the App Store, but Colonote, which we will be diving into today, is actually free, which is honestly so outstanding, I can't believe this app is free. All right, so hopping in, this is what the app looks like when you first launch it. They have pre-made folders, so you can see kind of the inner workings of the app, I guess. On the left-hand side, you have three icons. The user icon allows you to sign in using one of your social accounts, which according to Colonote is only required if you want to collaborate on your notes with someone else. And then we have the help icon, which just looks like a bunch of tutorial videos of the app. Then what looks like to be a refresh icon. On the right-hand side, we have a plus page icon. So this is where you can create a new name, change the name and choose a paper template. You cannot currently import your own templates into the app like you can with other note-taking apps. But what is interesting is that they have this joint rooms option where you can join public notes to connect with other people. It doesn't seem to be monitored, but I mean, what do you expect from people on the internet or in these public rooms? There are then these three dots, which pulls up a larger menu. You can create a new note from this menu as well. You can import a PDF, create a new folder, you can also toggle on this organizing mode, which allows you to delete things, move them, or rename them. They do have this style option, but it appears to only be in beta. They also have options to create a folder on your iCloud drive and then move notes between the local folder of notes stored in Colonote and then the iCloud drive folder. And then you also have store options by name, the date it was created or the date it was edited. And then you can turn on tips for additional help, which could be nice. All right, so creating a new note, taking a look at the toolbar here, the icon in the left-hand corner is the settings. So we can toggle to draw with our finger or toggle on box editing mode. So we'll get into that in a little bit. If we were to add a bunch of pictures or something, you can click that to edit them all at once. An option to add highlight behind text, which is interesting to be able to toggle on and off. You can select favorites for your notes. So like favorite pens or highlighters, which kind of hover over your notes, which can be really handy. I'll show you how to do that. And you can also change the page template, which is honestly really invaluable feature in a note taking app. They also have different collaboration settings you can edit. You can also print and export as a PDF or export as their own .colonote data file. Then we enter some dark mode settings. You can enable dark mode and it changes the entire interface of the app. But something else really interesting is that you can create dark paper and it changes the contents of the paper to reflect that dark paper. I've never seen this before, so it really is a leg up on other paid note taking apps. If you click dark mode and then toggle below it, it changes the notes to the dark paper and it actually optimizes the text or handwriting or pictures or whatever is on your notes, your textbooks, your PDF files to work really well on the dark paper. This applies to textbooks, PDF files you import. It's not just limited to the notes that you create, which I find so, so interesting. The last few options under the settings menu are about following Colonote or reviewing the app. It looks like they also have an option to report bugs or request new features as well. We also have that same help icon in this toolbar. All right, so now for the main tools of the app and why you're here, right? So first we have the pen tool. You can customize the colors of the pen tool, size of the pen tool, and even its opacity, which is pretty wild. You can add it to your favorites and it will create these little hover icons over your notes. If you have that favorites tool option selected and toggled on in the settings, you can drag and move the hovering icons if they ever get in your way when you're note taking, or you can just drag them all down to delete them. This doesn't look like something you can select, so I'll be sure to point this out, but if you click more color, it'll actually bring up the grid, spectrum sliders, and all of that. Under sliders, you can enter your own hex codes for a certain color. My absolute 
favorite feature of this app, however, is the eyedropper tool. It literally made my heart so, so happy to see this. So you can select that and pick up colors to use in your notes, just to have a cohesive note-taking experience. I'm just obsessed that they added this eyedropper tool. I will say that the writing experience is phenomenal, to me at least. I know a lot of people may have different preferences for how their writing experience feels in different note-taking apps, but I actually really, really love the writing experience the most in Colonote, like over Good Notes, which is the app I normally use, over Notability, obviously over Apple Notes. Like I seriously love it so much. So kudos to Colonote. Similarly, there is the pencil tool. I love this tool because it has such a realistic charcoal-like texture like that of a real pencil. And it is pressure sensitive with an Apple pencil. So you can do some really nice shading work with this tool. Similarly to the pen tool, you can change the colors, the size, opacity, and all of that. And no surprise, a highlighter tool that has all of those same menus. You can adjust the opacity here too, but since it is a highlighter, you'll want to be wary of increasing the opacity. We then have the scissor tool, which is effectively the lasso tool. So clicking this tool, you can pull up a rectangular or freeform option for your lasso. Whenever you lasso something, you'll get a bunch of different options. And this is where I start to not be a fan of things. It would make more sense to just have a text options menu, kind of like they do in Notability and GoodNotes and literally every other app. The UI here is just not my fave. So yeah, but there is the trash icon to remove it. You have the duplicate icon right next to it. And then several different copy to clipboard options, depending on what you lassoed. They also have a convert to text option for handwriting if you lassoed your handwriting and a paintbrush icon for changing the color and all of that stuff. So yeah, I'll just show you some clips of these different icons. I don't find it to be the most intuitive. So this is my least favorite part of the app is just the lasso tool stuff. We then have the eraser tool, which allows you to erase the whole or partial strokes of anything that you write. It also has the ability to switch back to the previous tool you were using, which I find to be pretty cool and kind of a leg up on other apps as well. They also have a scribble out to erase feature, which I imagine incorporates a bit of scribble from iPad OS. The text tool is a little finicky too in this app and is another thing I'm not a huge fan of. It opens this large screen where you have to type out whatever it is and then you can change the font and the color of the font. It looks like Colono also does not allow you to use custom fonts. None of my custom fonts appeared in this font menu, so I know it's not pulling from the custom fonts that I have downloaded on my iPad that allows me to access fonts across a multitude of different apps on my iPad. Anyway, you can then click done and it adds the text to your page. I'm not a huge fan of it opening a different window versus just typing directly on the note page, but it does make use of Scribble for the text features. Again, it pops up with the weird side icons around the box. You'll click the check mark to place it and all of that. You'll also have to use the lasso scissor tool to move the text, unlike in most note-taking apps where you can just hit the text tool again to move the text boxes. This star icon has multiple settings. They have a lasso pointer, which you can actually change the size and style of. An automatic shape tool, which actually allows me to draw more shapes than the one in GoodNotes, so like hearts and stars. You can't hold to create automatic shapes or straight lines like you can in GoodNotes and Procreate. You actually have to come and click this option, at least at the time of me filming this video. They have a fill tool, which is pretty cool. You can fill shapes with different colors, which you can't do in other note-taking apps I've tried. And it also has this pretty hazy looking fill option as well. So more options than just a solid color fill. And then they have a curve tool, which could be helpful for those who write and draw a lot of graphs in their notes. They have video icons here, so you can see more about these features too, which is pretty helpful. Then they have a ruler tool, which I find to be the best ruler I've seen or used in other note-taking apps I've tried. This is another way to create those straight lines. It also shows the angle of the ruler, which I personally would have loved to have in my physics and math classes I was taking whenever I was a chemistry major. Then they have this hand icon. If you select this, you can draw and do stuff in colon with your finger. At first, I thought this was the reading versus editing tool like in other note-taking apps, but I've honestly tried absolutely everything and it just doesn't seem to be a feature in Colonote currently and that's clicking embedded links. 
So this means you cannot make full use of links in things like digital planners or notebooks, textbooks, or any other PDF files that you use that have these embedded links. You'll just have to scroll to the page that you want. They then have this picture tool, which I find to be a little bit misleading. If you click it, it allows you to edit anything that has a box, so to speak. So text boxes, pictures if you imported them, which I'll show you how in a sec. The current UI gives the impression that this is the tool you select to add pictures, but it's really the one to edit them in text boxes for some reason. Box editing mode, I guess, like I mentioned earlier in the settings menu. They then have this recording feature that so many Notability users love, and it's honestly the exact same as in that app, so that could be really helpful if you feel that you need that feature in note-taking apps, and this one's free. This plus icon on the right hand side has more options as well. This is where you can insert those images, paste images and take photos. You can also insert text, paste rich or regular text, which are also really nice features. They also have scan settings built into this menu, which I find to be pretty unique compared to other note taking apps I've tried. And then similar to GoodNotes, they have stickers that you can add to your notes. There currently isn't a way to add your own sticker collections like in GoodNotes, but they do have more pre-made options available that you can try. This little people icon here shows you who the note was shared with and all of that stuff. And then we have this layers icon in the top right hand corner, which shows the pages in your notes. Clicking the plus page icon automatically adds a page to your notes, but you can also long press on a page and it will pull up the insert, duplicate and delete page options. So that is most of, if not everything, about the Colono app that I've played with and discovered. It doesn't have all of the popular features like in other paid note-taking apps, but it does have the most important ones in addition to tools and features I've never seen before. The writing experience is phenomenal in my opinion. The UI is not the best, and I did find the app to be pretty unstable. I was working in Colono for about 15 minutes when it decided to keep freezing up and crashing and I am using the newest M1 iPad Pro. However, it is a free app, which still blows my mind. I've paid for some note-taking apps that I believe to be worse than Colno, and Colno is free. So if you're not sure whether you want to pay money for a note-taking app, don't. Try out Colno, see if it works for you, and if it does, that's awesome. Another free thing you can do is to subscribe to the channel. I hope this video was helpful. If there are other note-taking apps or any other apps you just want me to try out and do walkthroughs of, comment them down below. I'm happy to review them, check them out, and help you all with downloading apps that will help you take notes or just do other rad stuff on your iPad. I'll see you here next week on YouTube with another video, but if you want to see more of me until then, follow me over on Instagram, TikTok, or Pinterest.